What's up, everybody? Hugo Infinity is back with the book reviews over again. Um, it's been a while since I posted a book review. You know, I've been so caught up in life. There's so much has been going on lately. Just a lot of personal stuff. Also, another a lot of other projects I'm working on. Um, but I'm back. And, I'm, you know, hopefully y'all missed me. Today I'll be reviewing three books for y'all. I got Hugo Cabaret. I got Middle Game, and I've got Sex on the Moon. If I had to rank these top three, you know, I'd say Hugo Cabaret would come in third place. Sex on the Moon would come in uh, close second. Middle Game would have to take it all because, well, let's just get started. Hugo Cabaret, best thing about this book, even though it got third place on my little list right now, doesn't mean it's a bad book. It's pretty awesome because it's a picture book. Incredible, right? So, has a bunch of pictures. Has enough substantial story to, to make you want to read it. You get really invested with the world building in this book. If you don't have the time to read the book, you know, you can always watch the movie uh, Hugo, which is, you know, based off of the book. I recommend both. You know, the book, it it's very... It's very nice to read, you know. You're flipping through, you know, you get... You're very invested in the world of Hugo. Because of all the drawings, just the perspectives it, it gives you. You know, whether it's a scene atop of the cityscape or if it's um, a scene in the train station. You know, it takes place in, in the train station. Hugo, he's born... Um, where, where does this book place, actually? in Paris yeah he was born in Paris he loses his parents he goes to live with his uncle who uh, takes care of the clocks at the train station his uncle ends up passing away also so it's just Hugo he's running the clocks and while he's doing this he's rebuilding this automaton that his father was working on previously he has the blueprints to it he's trying to rebuild it you know he's stealing a uh, mechanical toys from the toy uh, vendor so that way he can you know use the parts to build the automaton well, one day he gets caught by the toy vendor. Toy vendor's furious. Then he sees the blueprints. And he's like, where did you get this? You know, he seems to recognize it. And so, it just leads into this whole story of um, Hugo uncovering the past of this automaton. And that's where I'm going to leave it off at. You know, I don't want to give away too much of the story. You know, there's still a good amount of, of substance after that. So, pick up the book. A the Invention of Hugo Cabaret, you know, it's a very casual book, has pictures in it, shouldn't take you too long to read. Um, and if you don't have time to read the book, you should definitely check out Hugo on Netflix. That is my third place for today. Also, Hugo Cabaret, Hugo Infinity, come on, I had to pick it up. So, I'm just dropping everything today. Um, second book on the list, Sex on the Moon by Ben Mesrich. This is the author of The Accident on No Billionaires. You've probably seen the movie. If you haven't, you know, it's also a movie you can check out. Sex on the Moon is hilarious. It's not, you know, it's not a necessarily a comedy book, but the way it's written is so ironic. You know, it's uh, literally this guy, he decides to steal the moon for his girlfriend. You know, he's always like, um, I'm gonna give you the moon, you know, and he take, he's literal, but he's an old school romantic, so he's very literal about it. He joins NASA solely for that purpose, is to steal a piece of moon rock. You know, the moon rock samples that they have in labs. So it's all about him trying to steal these moon rocks. You know, um, there's a third person, there's a, no, another person involved um, that's buying the moon rocks from him. And, and it's, it's a very witty story, you know, it's a lo lovable character, he's very charming. Um, and just everything he gets away with, it's ironic, it's just, you know, he gets away with so much stuff that you're like, you know, you know, it's definitely fiction. You're like, okay, he just walks into the space simulator, happens to hop on a ride of it, and he walks out like, I'm the coolest guy on campus, you know, it's, it's one of those stories where it's just like, it's set up for the protagonist to win, but the ending would trip you out. So that's all I'm going to leave on that note. Sex on the Moon, clever title, clever story. Um, I liked it. The reason why it's called Sex on the Moon because, well, 
he finds the moon rock. So, last but not least, middle game. Now I have a lot to say about this story. This, the meat of this video will be about middle game because there's so much to go off of. You know, the other two books I just mentioned are very casual books. You know, you could pick them up, spend a few days, maybe, you know, a week or two on them. You know, you could just read it at your own leisure. Middle game, you'd have to be invested in this book. You'd have to follow along. You have to memorize what's because there's so much going on in this book. And the premise of the book is there's this alchemist, right? And he wants to control the universe like all alchemists do. So what better way to control the universe than to put it into human form so it's easy to manipulate. So what he does is he gets a bunch of different elements. He's, he tries to find the right combination, whether it's a... It's, and he does this through a set of twins. So let's say, you know, he makes a set of twins chaos and order or a set of twins light and day, you know. Uh, he's trying to create sets of twins that embody these uh, cosmic forces. And so the story centers around a set of twins, Roger and Dodger. And um, one of them controls everything with language, whether it's body language, whether it's storytelling, words, you know. Um, it, he controls all the elements of, of language. And his twin, I think his twin, he's Roger, his twin is Dodger. Um, she controls everything to do with numbers, math, patterns, formulas. And so basically it's a sort of left brain, right brain type of thing where it's in, but you know, it's in two sets of twins. But the whole story is about them becoming whole again, becoming one brain, one entity. Because initially they're, they're separated at birth. They're put on two different sides of the continent, you know. Um, but at a young age, they start to communicate telepathically. And so they start talking to each other. At first, they think they're crazy, you know, so they start communicating for a while. Then they meet in person. And just throughout the story, it just shows the relationship. It shows character development, how these characters grew up. Like Roger being good of words, you know, he was always a popular one. Um, Dodger being, you know, the nerdy girl. She was kind of more introverted. She was kind of more to herself. And it just talks about how they balance each other out once they do find each other. And while all this is going on, the alchemist has created a new set of twins and he says okay forget this old set of twins this is the one that's gonna i'm gonna manifest that's gonna become whole and i'm gonna control them i'm gonna control the universe and so so he can't do that unless the first set of twins is destroyed so he's 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 on this mission to destroy them they're on this mission to become whole before um they get destroyed because if they become whole you know they control everything you know it's like superhuman type of thing you know and it's it's a lot of this book is character driven you know a lot of you know other stories are plot driven this is more uh, about the characters you really get to know them you know from the inside out you see that the relationship they have with each other you know obviously being telepathic they become very close to each other but also a long period of time where they don't talk you know there's also certain elements that that separate them from each other and so all in all, it was a great book. And the reason why I picked this book up, I had to mention this. It's the award-winning, Hugo Award-winning book. Um, so apparently there's a Hugo Award in the literature community about, it pertains to sci-fi literature, which is I thought was amazing. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be reading books off of the, the Hugo Award-winning list and Hugo Award-winning or Hugo-nominated books. Cause I just think that's awesome that I love books. My name's Hugo and they have a Hugo Award. So, um, all in all, these three books, I would highly recommend. Hugo Cabaret if you're into something more casual. You can also watch it on Netflix if you don't like to read too much. Sex on the Moon if you want something witty, you know, just more casual, nothing too, too heavy, you know, just very uh, casual literature. And Middle Game if you want something more, um, thought-provoking and philosophical um, there's not too much just, uh, negative to say about these books I'd say maybe if I were to say negatives is uh, middle game the way it's structured there's certain elements to where it, it, it will show the regular story and then an excerpt from another book which can kind of throw you off you know but you'll see what I'm talking about when you read the book but it's not 
too much of a bother. It's just a weird structure for it. Other than that, though, these books are great. And I will be posting more consistent content. I'm aiming for every Wednesday and every Sunday, a new book review. Um, I'm trying to narrow down a niche, you know, because I know there's a community on YouTube called BookTube where um, all the book reviewers, it's like sort of a, a nickname for all the, the, the book community on YouTube. But me, you know, I'm kind of doing it different. I'm doing uh, book reviews, interviews, and music. So I'm trying to find a very solid balance between the three of them. I do have some new songs coming out that I'm getting ready to record this weekend. Um, interviews, I haven't scheduled any because of COVID. A lot of people are keeping their distance, which, you know, as you should. Um, you know, you got to protect everybody and be safe. But I might start doing Skype interviews, so keep on the lookout for that. Other than that, though, keep reading, keep following along. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. So your friends, you know, share the Facebook groups. I do want to grow, not necessarily just for my own personal gain, but just to spread the joy of reading to everybody. I feel like, you know, society is so full of screens that sometimes we just need to turn it off. And just pick up a good book, you know, um, and just enjoy being here, you know. There's just so much going on in the world right now, politics, you know, the environment. Sometimes we just need to just take a casual break. I feel like screens are so much thrown at us, advertisements on all this, you know, all these lights in our face. For a good book, sit down in the quiet, put some good music on, and just get lost in the pages, you know. I am also working on a graphic novel. Um, not gonna give away too many details about that because I don't want people stealing my ideas because they're very good ideas. But be on the lookout for that. I have a lot coming for y'all. I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch this video. Much love. Um, and until next time, this has been Hugo's Book Club.